think we probably need to be looking at it from the national curriculum perspective. And I think uh, when we are looking at trying to align the national curriculum um, to that set of 21st century competencies, including digital literacy, I would say that at the curriculum design and development level, they have done a really good job uh, in terms of the implementation of course, basically all public schools are expected to uh, like well align their school curriculum to the national curriculum. Uh, I think the key issue then would come to the capacity of schools to be able to implement that curriculum. And of course, uh, at or, uh, at the national level, you usually see a range. There have been some schools that have been more successful in being able to implement that curriculum and some schools that are uh, less competent. And I think quite often it is due to the capacity of the school, right? So you are able to see a lot of good pockets of innovative practices in terms of being able to achieve that set of the expected outcomes, right? And of course, you are able to see in some other schools uh, a so-called lesser degree of it. Yeah. So I said you'll be able to see quite a range, even for a very developed and advanced country like Singapore. You you would still be able to see that range. But of course, in the developing countries uh, that like urban and rural divide is even greater. Yeah. I think uh, the capacity building itself, uh, no doubt, quite often it is expected that the national government through its various agencies actually take up the role to build the capacity. But the thing is, at the individual level, I think there need to be more being done because in order to build a capacity in the first place, the teachers have got to buy in that there is that need to build that capacity. So extrinsically and intrinsically, what motivation are there to really uh, ensure that they are building their capacity because we want the teachers to take over their own professional learning. We do not want it to be too top down. But at the same time, the extrinsic part needs to come from the system level. What are the expectations? What are the competency standards that they have got to be meeting up to? What are the professional development, professional learning programs and activities that are available to the teachers. But at the intrinsic level, I think the teachers must find it as a personal journey that they are always like learning for life, which is a set of skills that they are trying to like develop in their students. So how do they really take the ownership of their own learning? And how could they find meaning in their own learning? So that is one of the key challenges that we probably have as well. How to instill uh, that intrinsic motivation to want to engage in their own professional development or their own professional learning journey. I think when we are looking at ICT from the equity perspective uh, in the developing countries, it's actually really a lot to do with uh, the urban and rural divide. Uh, and to a certain extent, also uh, the social economic uh, status of the region in which the schools are being situated. So like quite often uh, schools in the city are well are like much better resource uh, in terms of infrastructure, 
right, in terms of hardware and at times even in terms of the resources. Uh, I have worked in the very mountainous region in Papua, which is a province in Indonesia before. Besides infrastructure, they have got issues trying to get access to resources as well. So I think f from the system like level, uh, the government could do more, right, in terms of like really trying to provide more equitable access to infrastructure, hardware and resources, uh, especially to those regions and to those communities that are not as well served. And uh, you are already seeing like, like more of that, especially within the medium income countries like Indonesia, like Vietnam, uh, whereby they are targeting the more remote and rural regions uh, in the country, right, to provide more equitable access, not just to infrastructure, but increasingly more to professional development of teachers as well. If we are looking at the challenges, um, I would say that besides infrastructure and capacity, I would reckon that there is not enough like evidences uh, that we are like gathering uh, within the country about the impact of ICT in education not just to teachers' capacity, but the impact to students' learning, right? Both in terms of learning engagement and outcomes. There have been probably uh, some research studies being done on a small scale basis, right? Within a school or across a few schools in a project. But at the system level, right? Uh, I mean, when we are looking at countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, that have an ICT in education master plan since way back in the late 1990s. And I was like, what impact do all these plans have on students' learning outcomes? And uh, there have been a lot of student learning data that have been gathered at the national level. And I think there need to be a much more systematic way in analyzing those data with respect to the ICT in education implementation. And that is one of the key challenges. You know, it's like in Singapore, you know, by 2017, I mean, we, are, we would have already been two decades into the ICT in education master plan. We have been documenting a lot of promising practices a lot of things about how students learn, but what then are the impacts of using technologies right, in schools on students' learning outcomes? Are we able to capture that beyond standardized test scores? Right? Are we able to argue that their 21st century competencies have been developed or not developed and the degree of development Right, so uh, to me, that is one of the key challenges that is not very well looked into uh, across countries. May they be advanced developed countries or may they be emerging developing countries like Laos and Timor-Leste. Yeah. I would reckon that conversations are key uh, to the success of not just policy implementation, but also policy formulation. And as a professor in a university, together with the Head Foundation, I think you can really bring people together, different stakeholders with different experiences expertise and experiences in the region to engage in those conversations, right? In like being able to formulate the guidelines for policymakers to develop policies 
that are more relevant and appropriate in driving ICT in education, but also in supporting ICT in education within their country. And eventually, as policies are being implemented, right, uh, to really work with policy makers in trying to form consultation groups, uh, in trying to capture not just the impact, but a very formative evaluation so that there can be constant like fine-tuning of the policy in order to eventually ensure that the policy is able to meet what is to be delivered at the end right of those policy initiatives right uh, so to be able to have a more consultative ways of policy implementation and eventually the evaluation of it.